All right, here we go. So this is page 89. This is Pythagorean theorem number one. Everybody say Pythagorean. Pythagorean. Everybody say Pythagorean. Everybody say Pythagorean. Okay, why is this word so unusual to you? Because it's long. It is? Yep. Um, it's a name. It's a name from 2,000 years ago. If we talk about our names, like 2,000 years from now, it's going to sound strange too. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. Like like our names, you and me both, okay? Okay, you ready? Let me try to stay on track. What type of triangle is this? Everybody look up here. What type of triangle? Right triangle. Good. Right triangle. How do you know it's a right triangle? The 90 degree angle. Good. The 90 degree angle. So everything in Pythagorean is a right triangle. All right. Good. Um, there's one 90 degree. How do you know that you can only have one 90 degree angle in a triangle? How do you know? Because all the angles, and there's three of them, have to equal 180. If you use it up with two, it's going to look like this. Here would be one angle 90. Here would be a second 90. Is this a triangle? So everybody say no. Right? That's not a triangle. You can only have one. So that's first things first. All right, second. Let's talk about the names of the sides. Here's a right triangle. We're dealing with Pythagorean. This is actually a person's name. If you name your pet Pythagoras, I will definitely give you bonus points. Okay? If you go home, and maybe your pet has two names. Maybe it's got the current name, Roy. Maybe the current name, and you make Pythagoras a second name. I'll give you bonus for that too. I want a video of you calling your pet Pythagoras, come here, and then the, your cat's got to come. All right. <laughs> if, that, if you do that, that's for sure bonus points. Okay. All right, focus. How many sides? Um, three. Everybody say three sides. Three sides. There are only two names. Two names. If there's three sides and two names... If there's three sides and two names, then two of the sides are named the same thing. You following this? Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody go like this with your hand. Go like this, go like this, go like this. Go like this, say a triangle, go like this, go like this. I know, it's embarrassing. Okay, go like this. Go, a triangle has two legs like a human. Say that. Triangle has two legs like a human. Good, say it again, everybody. The triangle Lizette? has two legs like a human. Here's one leg, and here's the other leg. What do you notice about the location of the legs? They're, um, the two, oh, no. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, yeah. Location. like, why isn't, look at this side, that's why not a leg. Because the side that's the angle. They're perpendicular. Then the one that makes the angle. One leg is up and one leg is down. So, I'm going, I'm going for what Fanny said. Fanny said the legs touch the 90 degree. Yeah. See that? So, if I redraw this, watch again. Draw it like this and this. Where's the legs? On, on the... Everybody, everybody look up here. Is this a leg? Yes. No, no, no. no. Why? Because it's like the other one is. Which one? Is this a leg? Yes. Why? Because it makes the angle. Because it's one of them touching the angle. Good. Is this a leg? Yes. Everybody look up here. Is this a leg? Yes. Because, and you, you got to say why, because it's touching the 90. See how it's touching? <laughs> touching. Is this okay? Yes. And how many legs does your triangle have? Two. Like a? Person. Person. You changed my phrase a little, but I'll take you up on it. I said like a human. Person is absolutely acceptable. Okay, two legs like a person. All right? So, are you focusing over here? One leg is on the You need to know where the legs are? You covered that. Go for the third side. Everybody say hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Okay. Oh, I need to know in here. 
Here's how you spell it. Everybody say hypo. Hypo. 10. Ten. Use. 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 Put it together. Hypotenuse. Everybody say hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, and it's not touching the 90. It's opposite the largest angle. So, longest side. Can you see that? Can you see how this side is longer than these? Okay, I got a couple. You guys looking up here? Yeah. Can you see how this side is longer than these two? Yeah, they you see equal, it? Like, kind of like an equal length. Yeah, if I measured it, I literally took this and I measured it, and I went up like this, this one's longer. Yeah. Fair enough. Do you see it? So longest side is hypotenuse, and it's across from this largest angle. Across from, in this case, a, the 90 degree, because that's the largest angle in the triangle. Are you okay with this? Yeah. How many have heard of a hypotenuse before? C is good. You're already ahead of me in the Pythagorean theorem because you're already down the road. So I totally appreciate that. So how many have covered Pythagorean theorem before? Okay, I got a couple hands, but not as many as, as normal, right? Normally, I would see half the hands go up. So I feel like over the last few years, we've um, just, I think it's pandemic uh, curriculum or yeah. something. We've kind of dropped some stuff. A lot of right, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. At least you're honest, and I see what you're saying, okay? Yeah. So yeah, thank you for that. Well, so here we go. I'm gonna rewrite the Pythagorean a little bit differently. This is called the Pythagorean theorem. All right, and I'm gonna write it slightly differently than yours and we'll translate it. So it should work for yours too. I'm gonna say it is the height squared equal to the leg squared plus the leg squared. Why do I like mine, the way of writing it? And then I'll show you yours, okay? I'll, I'll translate it for you. Because we're gonna take the length of whatever this leg is here and plug it into one of these. It doesn't matter which, because they're both legs. We're gonna take the, the length of the other leg in there, we're gonna raise it to the power two, and it's gonna equal the length of the hypotenuse squared. Now, the traditional way of doing Pythagorean theorem would be to call one of these A, one of these B, and this C, and square them all, and reverse it too. Okay, so how many of you have heard A squared plus B squared equals C squared? Yeah. Okay, I got a couple more yeses. So, the, part, the hard part about that formula is students always forget which goes in for which. So I find if I just have them rewrite it as leg squared plus leg squared equals height squared, it's the same thing. And you can always use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You can use your training, all right? But what I find is the hardest thing for students is they go, okay, now which side goes in for which of these ABCs, right? And so if I write it this way, same, same formula, just written a different way, hopefully to help you more, is what I'm thinking, okay? Wait, it doesn't... So that's the correct way to write it? So this is the correct way, yeah. Well, correct, this is the most common way. I don't even know if there's a correct way. But this is the way I try to get my students to look at it to help them through the idea of which is which. What's A, what's B, what's C? Okay, so let's do this. Let's start with a first example. Here's a right triangle. All your triangles are gonna be right. They'll all have 90 degrees in them. There won't be any that aren't right. You with me? Okay, so if this is 13 and this is five and this is 12, help me write the Pythagorean theorem for this. I, I can't write the whole thing so long. Pythagorean theorem, help me write it. If I write for you this, let's take my formula, height squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. What would you fill in for this, for height? 13. 13. Squared. Good, and don't forget the squared on it. Why did we pick 13? How did we know that was the height, Bree? Because it's the longest side. It's the longest side, tell me more. Who else can add to that? How else did you know 13 was the height? How else did you know this length here was the hypotenuse length? 
It doesn't touch the 90. Yeah, I might add the word touch there. It's across from the 90. Is that what you said? Yeah, it's across from the 90. It doesn't touch the 90. You okay with this? That's how we know that's 13. All right, tell me what I'm writing next for a leg. 12. 12? And I'm squaring it. There's a plus in the formula. If I write 12 here, what's the last thing I write? Five. Five. And I'm squaring it. Now, if I'm going to start over. What's another way I could have written this? Yes, Bree? I could have reversed these. And everything's going to be fine because they're both added. And they come out the same way. That's what our properties of math tell us. You can add something. You can add 5 plus 3. It's 8. You can add three plus five, it's eight. It doesn't matter which way you add those legs, they're gonna come out to the same number. Is this okay with you? Okay, so this is your magic Pythagorean theorem. Do you know your, your times tables or do you have your calculator out? Open up the calculator app on your phone, go quickly. Open up the calculator app. Any chance you know 13 squared off the top of your head? I wouldn't expect you to. Wouldn't expect you to. Try it. What's 13 times 13 or 13 squared on your phone? 169. 169 here equals what's 5 squared? You might know that. 25. 25, right? 5 times 5. What's the mislead? What do students often do with squared? They multiply it. They add it. They add it. So the most common mislead for students, like if I was writing a, a, a multiple choice test for students, I would put 10 in there for this. And a lot of students might pick it because your brain's thinking add the five plus five and get 10. You're not, you're multiplying it to get 25. You okay with this? So remember what five squared means. Five squared equals five times five, 25. The mislead is students just go like this in their brain. I thought that too. So just correct it, make a correction, right? And try to relearn it. A lot of math is what we do is we learn certain things along the way and then we kind of start to take them as correct and we sort of learn a lot of some of some of math is unlearning things as well as learning things. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So this becomes 25. What is 12 squared? One of the favorites for you guys. What's 12 squared? Everybody say 144. Remember that one? That's one of the ones in multiplication tables. I don't know why, but kids will often do 12 times 12 is 144, and they learn it early, and it's different. I'm not sure what about it makes it sticky, right? 144. All right. Can you add up 144 and 25 in your mind? 169. And does it equal the other side of the equation? Right? This is very important. This is an equation. It's got an equal sign. So one side must equal the other side. That's the whole point of an equation being like a balance beam, right? So in this case, this triangle is correct. This is a correct right triangle with the links of sides correct in here, right? There's a few more examples just to give you uh, some experience and setting up for missing sides. Let's do 512 and question mark. Here you go. Okay, five, 12, question mark. Help me set this up. Let's go with height squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. What do I write? Uh, for leg squared, I think we could do leg squared, right? Okay, you want to do leg squared? So go. I think it's five, oh well, yeah, five, and then 12. Go ahead and say the squared while you're at it. Okay. Keep those in there. What If I have a question mark in math, what do we put in for a question mark? X. X. And for the Pythagorean theorem, what do you need? Square. Boom. That's your setup. This is unknown, right? So I'm coming up with some number times itself that's going to equal the sum of these two numbers times themselves, right? Okay, let's write. And this one's just writing out the, um, we're not going to solve it right now. We're just sort of doing setup. How about question mark 15, 17? Here's another one. Question mark 15, I'm trying to write them just like the notes. How do I set up Pythagorean theorem for this? Hang on, Bree. do it in your mind. Okay, you're ahead of us. Who wants to tell us, what do we write first? Hang, yes, sign in and take my pass. Good. One of the legs is a variable. Very good. One of the legs. Does it matter to me which of the legs? No. 
because I don't care where these legs go. That's why I like this formula better where leg and leg, when it says A and B, my brain is thinking they're different somehow, but they're not, they're both legs, right? I know they're different numbers and that's why somebody probably wrote A and B, right? So you can write what do I write? So set it up like this. Do the height squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. So start with height squared. What do you got? Height squared, 17. 17. Tell me more. Um, and it's squared, right? Good. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for, um, right? I'm looking for those details. Equals Good. 15 squared. Good. And Here, have... you don't have to. Just sign in there and take my pass right there. To find something that will... What's the form? Stick with the formula. What's oh. next? Go right through the formula. What's next? Um, plus x squared. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You okay with this? Yeah. Okay, that's your intro lesson to Pythagorean. Next, you'll start going and trying to solve these equations for them, and your school G's will start to walk you through these. Pythagorean, to me, is one of the genius ideas that... Uh, you know, I always ask my students, don't we live in a random universe, yeah. right? And most heads start going, yes, right? Um, however, Pythagorean for right triangles, no matter what, this thing comes out true every time. Sort of a strange idea. In a, in a, if it really is a random universe, why is it that this works, right? So maybe something to think about while you're doing it might be more interesting than just crunching the numbers. Okay, that's it. Uh, Allison, hit stop on that. Oh. <laughs> stop right there.